an example of why promoters and promoter mutations are interesting. Later on the course, we are going to hear about one of the all-time interesting differences that you can have in one of your promoters if you happen to be a vole. And increasingly, it's turning out equally interesting if you happen to be a human. This is a promoter upstream of a gene having to do with the hormone vasopressin. Do not panic or care if you haven't heard of this yet, but you will have in more detail within a few weeks. Vasopressin is this hormone which has something or other to do with social affiliative behavior in males and all sorts of interesting stuff with that. And naturally, it being a hormone out there is a vasopressin receptor, and thus there's a vasopressin receptor gene, and there's a promoter upstream of that gene, which turns out to come in a couple of different flavors. And you look at voles, which are little hamster thingy sort of things. And there's all sorts of different vole species, and there's ones in the mountains, and there's ones in the plains, and there's ones in the, you know, from California to the New York Islands, and there's all these different species. And it happens, some of them happen to be monogamous, some of them happen to be polygamous. We're often running with the sociobiology of that and how many imprinted genes and all that they're gonna have. But a critical difference in monogamous vole species there is a different promoter upstream of the vasopressin receptor gene than you find in the polygamous ones. And go and mess around with them, use gene therapy techniques to change the promoter to modify it, and you could convert a polygamous male vole into a resoundingly monogamous one. And I don't know if this counts as gene therapy, like curing a disease or just gene transfer sort of stuff, but what you've got here is change your promoter and you suddenly have a different pattern of expression, which parts of the brain it winds up in. Suddenly you have made a major shift in behavior. You're not causing a change in a gene, you're causing a change in its promoter. You've just changed a major if-then clause. Another example of it, there is a gene that codes for a hormone neurotransmitter that has something to do with pain perception called dynorphin. It's broadly related to things like morphine and such. And it's got a dynorphin gene. It's a little more complicated than that, but there's a promoter upstream. And recent research is showing that the number of copies of that promoter in different rats predict something about how readily they become addicted to various drugs. And that winds up being pertinent. Oh, back for a second, back to the vasopressin gene and the vasopressin reporter gene and its promoter. In the last couple of years, a number of studies come out. One, for example, in a very credible journal by a great group showing that if you happen to be a human male, which version of that promoter you have gives you a certain significant predictive power over how stable your social relationships are going to be. Get a load of that one. And that one is coming later on. Whoa, have a different type of promoter. And statistically, you are more likely to get divorced down the line. Okay, back to that first lecture, free will stuff. There is so much more to come along those lines. We will look at the vasopressin system much more in the sex lectures. But again, that's not a difference in a gene. That's a difference in a promoter.